Hey there, welcome to part six of the Naga Scout. I'm Iken, and this crazy tri uh, trip continues here. Let's have a look at the situation. All right, I'm carrying around a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. A lot of things changed since the last uh, part of this uh, episode. I found a lot of useful evocation items down in Lair. I finally got hands on some very powerful uh, endgame spells, which actually make this run quite possible to be a win, but don't mess it up. I have statue form now at my disposal. With Brilliance I can somewhat cast it safely. I really want to have a simulacrum too, because I found two manuals of ice magic, which is pretty insane. Uh, they will help me to bring up the necessary ice magic pretty quickly, although necromancy will be the bigger part of the training, yet still. These are some targets I can achieve. Now let's get down there. There are two Tengu. It's pretty concerning. Uh, I can constrict them though. Now let's try this. But uh, let's reach. Oh yeah, alright, I'm chucking them down pretty decently. With this character, I'm pretty much scared of everything the first time I meet it. That's an interesting armor boutique. I would need a one of digging to enter this. And there's a centaur warrior. I'm gonna shout and bring him closer to me where I can safely melee him. Don't want to get shot by this guy. Deals a lot of damage. Teleport trap. I don't want to step into that. An ugly thing. It's gonna be an interesting test. The last ugly thing I met messed me up horribly. This thing was no problem at all. Alright, that's Earth Magic 5. With Control P you can look up the last few messages of your uh, game and I find it pretty useful to be able to look up which skill was leveled up again because sometimes I lose track of these a bit too quickly. Alright, this Manticore looked a bit scary, but it only looked a bit scary. Hey, another amulet of the Cormand. I didn't need that. One good amulet is something I really could use. I feel a bit lacking at this department. Pretty surprised how much damage I can bring up with this uh, plus four trident of venom. And I think uh, in combination with the spectral weapon, if I'm able to keep it online while I'm down in Zod, the Spectral Weapon will provide enough damage to actually make even the Trident viable to finish up Zod. Don't know how I'm able to deal with Orbs of Fire then though. Alright, that's another bookshop. I need to browse a bit. Um, Lightning Spire, that would be interesting. It's a cheap and useful spell. Spells so such a multi-purpose tool. It's another book with silence in it. I don't need to put that on my shopping list though. Those books. What's up with you? And this one also has spire in it and deflect missiles. But I feel like this would branch out too far. Although as a Chai Worshipper, you learn spells pretty quickly since you're uh, having a very high base intelligence due to the buffs Chai provides. This Book of Enchantments has a lot of interesting spells I want to have. This has Silence, Deflect, and Discords also. Well, it's pretty unachievable. It's level 8, but Silence and Deflect missiles are very nice spells to have. Book of Ice. Hmm. Nah. 
Not interested. I mean, I can always look this stuff up when I'm somehow reaching the point where I learned everything and I'm still not running around with the orb and wondering what I should level next. But until that happens, I don't want to mark too many books. A scroll shop. That's easier to use. Three scrolls of teleport. Yeah, another one. Yeah. Gonna mark these ancient armor scrolls for further use. But right now I don't wanna uh, use up all my money for that. I am still saving for the Book of Unlife and yeah, I needed to buy those uh, teleportation scrolls. These are items I can't skip out on. That's that's no, that's a no no. I need those. These are survival tickets. With teleport scrolls, I can survive a lot of stuff, and I ran low on these. I'm sitting on seven again now, but a few episodes ago in the lair, I was down to zero. It's good to have a few of these again. Because this game gets very, very spooky the moment you are out of blink and teleport scrolls. Or you should be, uh, let's, let's say you should be pretty scared if you're ever completely out of these tools once you're deeper in the dungeon. Because they are, well, get out of jail tickets, kind of like that. Book of Transfigurations, Irradiate, fuck yeah, I really want to have Irradiate. This spell is so useful, because it's also a guaranteed hit as far as I know, and it's a point blank AoE. Since I'm slow as hell, sooner or later I'm gonna be swarmed in longer fights, and Irradiate can pack quite a punch if you're surrounded by stuff and combined with slouch I feel like I shouldn't be concerned as much as I am still concerned then on the other side I like to be concerned during games because I feel like I'm playing smoother if I'm always cautious all right getting sworn but not getting any damage and still dealing enough damage to get rid of all this stuff even without the spectral weapon that's pretty nice with this character i feel like i'm really hitting a good spot here there we go that's the first vault guardian and my first vampire so many new faces 13 percent chance to confuse me i take my chances but for this guy, I'm going to draw up the Spectral. I'm not going to mess around with uh, Vampires or Melee either. That was a real one. And it was surprisingly well equipped. Alright, let's have a look at this stuff. Pretty surprised at all this good stuff here. Ah, very good stuff. Very, very good stuff. Look at this cursed Ring of Teleportation. Ugh. So I have this ring of flight on me, I have potions of flight. I don't feel like I want to have both of these. And for now, I'm going to drop the potions of flight. Oh, where are you at? There you are. Because, oh, uh, let's drop the auto pickup too. Because I prefer the permanent source of flying over the limited one. That's the thought here. Alright, and I want to have a look at this ring mail. Uh, Center of Warrior Skeleton. Oh, you're not, a, you're not one of my buddies. <laughs> Didn't notice him among all these skeletons. Silly me. Alright, I want to put this on. And I'm naked. Well, I'm fighting this Melee zombie, but that's okay. It's only a zombie. Plus 4 ring mail, 14 AC, 18 EV, and this one... Ugh. Stop interrupting me, you pervies. Nah. 
not interested in this trade. So it turns out leather is seriously the best thing I can wear somehow. I want to have a spectral weapon. This is this is getting out of hand here. There's another Hydra. But these are not as much of a problem as a few episodes before. It's a good feeling if you're got past the Hydra panic phase of the game. Because, well, Hydras are, well, I consider Hydras as a check how well prepared you are for the situations beyond. Because, oh uh, well, the first Hydras can, re uh, usually Hydras are the first enemies to screw you up hard if you're ill prepared. <clears throat> for Castas, their raw damage output is pretty concerning. And for melee characters, the slashing weapon issue can pretty much mess up the day. And yeah, once you can fight these easily, you're usually set for a lot of stuff in this game. Oh, look at that. I, you know, I know I'm saving for this Book of Unlife. I know, I know. But... There are also some gloves. Two pairs of these, which I'm gonna buy. Can I only buy one? Uh, the lower ones look more fashy, fashionable. I'm still carrying around this armor. There's no reason for that. So, what's this? Oh yeah, that was great. Totally worth my money. Not. Damn. This Turns out this shield is cursed. And yeah, it's dex plus four. That's not useless, but I need to level up some more uh, shields before I can use this thing well. And while the higher shield rating is tempting, I'm still leveling up statue form. Um, yeah, so once pole arms hits 14, I'm gonna level up shields. But hey, all my gold is gone. Or another mediocre item. Feels not too cool, to be quite honest. I'm gonna drop it for now to save uh, inventory slots. Because I'm not gonna wear this before my shield, shield value gets close to 9. Uh, right now I will get way more profit out of uh, statue form castable. Alright, that's one AC more. Slowly getting there. Dungeon 14 done. Let's head into dungeon 15. Alright, I want to be more careful here. Ah, turns out there's already the entrance to the depths. So fire giants are pretty scary. Rakshasa too. Alright. I feel like I want to run back upstairs. Those imps I'm not concerned about this Rakshasa though. Uh, there's another fake one. The real one will drop weapons. And I'm getting screwed over here pretty hard. But region kicks in. And those centaurs are pretty poor at melee. This should be finally the real one. Yeah, alright. So I'm gonna duck out here for now. Heal up my wounds. Because this fire giant is certainly pretty dangerous and I want to pick a different downstairs and this is not too cool either but the other downstairs is at the opposite side so it turns out I'm stuck with this situation here but I have some more brilliance potions and it's only yellow now cool I feel pretty confident of this fight with 32 AC and 50% damage bonus on my melee attacks since I'm running statue form. It's also worth noticing. And I'm also resistant, um, immune to poison. And I should be somewhat res more resistant to uh, torment. But for these reasons, Beam is your friend. Put in statue form. Yeah, 50% resist torment. 
That's pretty insane. And I'm R elect, uh, resistant, resistant to electricity now. So overall, that's the good stuff about statue form. All these resistances and armor class and damage bonus. And all these drawbacks this spell normally has, uh, they don't interest me too much as a Chai follower. It's pretty funny. But you can use a uh, statue form to good, uh, to with good results without worshiping Chai Briatus as well, of course. Finally, the scroll of blinking. I was waiting for that so long. These were so rare across the game. And I feel like um a bit indecisive about uh, the next spell book I want to buy. And this situation, I want to drop in the slouch because these melee they can smite, and three of them can drop down a ton of damage during one turn. And since I'm that slow, uh, and they're that quick. Felt like this is a safe way to kill off these guys, and I have really enough uh, piety going on. And speaking of really enough piety going on, really harm your ugly things going. Yes, guys, seriously, not blasting these guys with slouch only because I have a skeleton here. Oof. But yeah. That's the power of slouch. That's why I invested so heavily into invocations. I mean, this cost did cost me a lot of piety, but I will regain piety moving as slow as I am. Because your piety gain is always uh, reliant on the difference between the speed of you and your enemy. And since I'm super slow, everything is giving me piety pretty well here. Cobalt Demonologist. So... I'm gonna step back a few tiles and shout. And that's not what I've expected. This is not the Cobalt Demonologist I expected. Damn. It's Luis. And I feel like this is a good situation to uh, step out of time and close this door and step away a bit. Because 27% chance of getting banished are super spooky to me. But turns out Luis found another way. So, damn. She didn't notice me yet. What I'm gonna do? I have no scroll of silence on me, because that would be my next go to option. I mean, well, I feel like Abyss shouldn't kill me off that easily. Yet still, I would I would have preferred to go to Abyss when I have Stature Form online. It's a bit early to do so now, but hey. So, I have 10 scrolls of teleportation at my disposal. I TB right next to her. Awesome. So let's try that again. She noticed me. Damn. So I get screwed up by the uh, teleport scroll, and luckily I got teleported a few steps away from her. It's not helping either. So I wasted two teleport scrolls. These are pretty useful uh, tools down in the abyss. Well, let's try this. I'm tired of running. I'm gonna want to acid her. And I'm gonna repeat that until she's in my face. All right, let's start whacking. Good. She didn't try to banish me. Got lucky here. And. She is running around with a large shield, and this, yeah, well, this is something I'm going to use. <clears throat> Ooh. This is going to be rough. 
All right, I feel like this could be possible, but not without uh, going into statue form. With brilliance, I have a very high chance to go into statue by now. It's very cool. Oops, it's not the tile I wanted to step upon, because I can safely attack over my skeleton here. They will rush into this room soon enough. All right, now for the ugly things. Yeah. Once I have this spell stable without uh, using brilliance potions, this game will get a lot easier. There we go. Ancient armor. I could enchant this buckler, but I don't want to. Ow. I did a mistake. He has this pain reflection thing going on. And turns out it hurts a fuck ton. So let's be more careful. But this showed me how much damage I do. Almost took 50% of my HP in one blow if I saw that correctly. Okay. Keeping this regeneration up is very important. I don't use Shroud too much anymore because I feel like it gets beaten down too quickly anyways. But against slow hitting enemies like giants, I'm still going to use it. Because I feel like it's a very good thing to do against slow hitting enemies. But apart from that, the spell is, has lived through his best times. Uh, my pack is full. What am I going to drop? I feel like this wand of enslavement should be empty by now. Anyways, so. Oh, there goes the big feeding. Hey, man. I am. I really wondered where you were at when Louise ran my face. So that was really spooky. 27% of getting banished is. Uh, well, it's a pretty high chance of a very uncomfortable event happening. But apart from that, I feel like I'm pretty well here so far. A few more uh, skill points in those magic schools. What's up with all those melee? Uh, a few more spell points in transmutations and earth magic, and statue form will become castable safely. And yeah, that's the point where this game will be way more stable than it was ever. Looking forward to it. So that's D15. And this means the, the first few steps into my first room branch are upon me. Huh. Where am I going to go? I feel like Snake Pit uh, is my first stop. Uh, Swamp should be pretty doable as well, I think, but I want to have statue form available for Swamp, because all the Hydras down there get way more manageable uh, as soon as I hit statue form. Come at me, man. I want to kill you. If you're pretty stealthy from time to time, you need to uh, yell at stuff to <laughs> get its attention. Turns out I'm pretty stealthy, actually. I'm wondering. It's only six stealth. It seems to be enough to trick all these guys. All right, that's a bunch of shops. Cool thing. Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Glowing de Demon Trident. Hell yeah. Okay. So, Ancient Armor is always interesting, uh, apart from that, this ring maybe. One of Acid, don't know. Don't think I need to mark these. Oh, there's a one of Digging. Yes, please. Another Antique Shop, another Root Demon Trident. There's so many interesting items to buy in this game so far. 
I'm not finding enough money for all of that. <laughs> it's really becoming a problem. So, yeah, at least at least this shop is un uninteresting. So two demon tridents, branded ones. Interesting, very very interesting. Goes the first anaconda. Okay, 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 okay. That that was that was pretty silly of me. So it turns out there's a whole army of guys here uh, hanging around. I think I want to step out of time. Um, turns out it was a bad idea. All right, so let's slouch into this. Kill off the most of them. Regen. Pretty hurt. So this glaive is the problem, you know. Glaives really hurt a lot. I have no heal wounds on me. So these guys are not acid resistant in any way. Ugh, please die. Ouch. So the acid wand is pretty useful because it will corrode your enemy, which makes him easier to kill. But also it makes the enemy attacks weaker. And I really wanted to have this uh, guy a bit weakened here. So what happens if I temporal distort into this dude? He gets closer, comfortable. Ow. All right, I really need to be super careful with these guys. Turns out they're friggin' monsters. Uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't leave these behind. Just noticed that there, uh, I skipped a few mana skeleton. All right. I really need as much allies as possible in this scenario. And I need to get a, uh, to avoid getting swarmed here. But there are certainly enough cho choke points to make stuff happen. Guardian Serpent. Damn. They can summon stuff in my face, which is pretty concerning. So. Oh. I resisted something. And my wand is empty. Okay. Pretty happy I got rid of this Guardian Serpent. And it turns out there's another one. Alright. Stepping around this corner to avoid the Naga Sharpshooter doing his sharpshooting job. Because they really hurt a ton. And I don't have statue form yet. Slowly getting there, and yeah, as long as I take these situations uh, serious enough, I think I'm pretty fine here. But these guys are pretty resilient. I need to bring up my spectral weapon more. Yeah, I think I need the spectral weapon to take care of these. And some more skeletons. I'm actually only finishing this one level here. And I think I'm going to cut this episode from there. And on the next run, I'm going to go for the first level of Swamp. And do a comparison how hard each area uh, screws me up. And yeah, that's basically the idea here. I'm getting chunked up hard so brutally my god so turns out I really uh, need to bring up statue form the next time I face one of these shock serpents because I got shocked for a ton of damage here repeatedly I don't think I was standing for a double zap but maybe I got double zap maybe that was the problem anyways with the statue form I'm uh, resistant to electricity so this gets more and more important to bring this spell up but somehow this area is still doable but I actually prefer the problem is I would uh, I, I would like to have statue form for both areas <laughs> right now 
but uh, turns out I have to work through this slowly. Uh, swapping uh, branch levels back and forth, doing level one of this, level one of that, uh, really helps you a lot if you're um, unable to deal with areas easily like I do here. I really have problems all along the way. This whole character is having a ton of problems across this whole game. So swapping back and forth between areas gives you a few more skill points while you're always hovering around the easiest parts of uh, single branches. So that's a pretty safe way to cut deeper uh, slowly and steadily instead of diving into the really dangerous stuff because Snake Pit 4? I don't think I'm ready for that yet, actually. I feel like Snake 2 should be no, should be no too big problem, but I actually prefer to go for Swamp 1 and try my luck there. Because down in Snake 2, I actually might run into something really nasty. Really, really nasty. Some vault might appear or some unique might run in my face. I mean, that could actually happen here as well, but... I'm not too sure if the chances are higher the deeper I get. Anybody knows that I would really be interested about that. But I feel like uh, in the first few levels of a room branch, I don't encounter dangerous uniques that often. I mean, it happens sometimes, but I feel like it happens more often the deeper I get down there. Don't know if that's just my imagination. Don't take this advice too seriously here. All right. We're done with Snake 1, heading over to Swamp 1, and yeah, turns out I'm still alive. I think this character is getting there to stay alive, if I manage to get statue form online without blowing myself up. Thanks for watching so far. Yeah, crazy run, we're getting there. Feel free to add some comments or anything you want to say about that i love to hear your feedback about this crazy trip my first naga game <laughs> hope you guys are enjoying your time as much as i do and yeah see you guys soon bye bye